Good morning, friends. It is a blessing and a joy to be back with you again this morning. Thank you to Don and to Sharon and to everyone who led worship last Sunday while I was with my grandchildren. Welcome if you are joining us on your computer or your tablet or your phone or you're here in the sanctuary with us this morning. Welcome if you have come in to worship this morning with questions and doubts or firm beliefs. Welcome if you are rejoicing today or if you're hurting today in your body or in your spirit. Welcome if your sense of God feels like being lost in the wilderness and traveling in circles for 40 years or more. Or if you sense God as that small, still voice that speaks in the silence or maybe a little of both. Welcome to people of all genders, bodies, shapes, and sizes, and colors. Welcome to people of all mental, physical, and emotional challenges. And I'm going to call up my share screen so we can share together the words of welcome. Okay, why didn't it show up? Let's try this again. Welcome to Lyndhurst United Church of Christ, where we are faithful to loving and honoring the skills while serving, while serving our community, and welcoming everyone. Excellent. So I have a clipboard this morning that many of you have already signed. Part of our safe church, healthy at church protocols is to sign in in case anyone in the congregation should happen to be test positive for COVID-19, we can let you all know if you've been in the worship service in the sanctuary. So just pass that around and sign your name. There are more lines on the back page, on the back of the page, if you need them. And I invite you to join me in our call to worship as we gather our hearts and our spirits and our mind in this time of worshiping. Friends, we are gathered to give thanks for all we have received from God's good hands. We gather to praise God's name, to acknowledge and contempt our sins, to hear God's holy word, and to ask for the things of our life. I know we don't often come in here without things weighing on our shoulders, but I hope that when you gather to praise and worship God, there's a little bit of joy in your voices. Let us draw near to God in all humility and celebrate God's infinite goodness and mercy. So I invite you this morning to join me in our affirmation of faith, which comes from the Disciples of Christ Christian Church. So kind of with a little bit of joy and enthusiasm this morning, we confess that Jesus is the Christ, Son of the living God, and proclaim him Lord and Savior of the world. In Christ's, In Christ's name and by his grace, we accept our mission, witness, and service to all people. To all people. We rejoice in God maker of heaven and earth and in covenant of love which binds us to God and one another through, and bapt through baptism into Christ, Christ we enter, we enter into newness of life and are made one, one, one with the whole people of God in the communion of the Holy Spirit we join together in discipleship and in obedience to Christ the table of the Lord. We celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the light of Scripture in the bonds of Christianity. In faith, we yield ourselves to God, God that and we serve, serve the one. one. Whose kingdom has no end. Blessings and glory and honor be to God forever. Amen. 
Okay, this morning I want to introduce to you our special guest, the uh, program co coordinator for the South Louisville Youth Center is Kevin Combs, and he's going to just say a few words about the program that we're still recruiting students for. Come on up, Kevin, and this is the microphone. Mitch. I don't knock it. There you go. Okay, the microphone should be on. And Super. I'll just tilt it up for you. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, I, I think I lost my indoor voice years ago. I blame that on 30 years uh, as an educator, as a coach. So uh, my indoor voice is broken. So if, you, if I'm too loud, please let me know. Uh, the program uh, is still in its early stages. We've been working hard to recruit students. Uh, Iroquois High School received a recruitment kit for me because JCPS has a protocol uh, if you, unless you're an essential staff member, you're not allowed in the building. So I was not allowed to go in and meet with kids during their lunch break. And I understand that. So I prepared a kit to allow uh, the administrative staff uh, to get the word out, gave them announcements, uh, and they efforted on that. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a great response. Past couple of weeks, if, or past week, if you happen to drive by church in the afternoon and seen a guy out at a table, with a box of applications, that was me trying to catch kids coming after school. Um, we developed and created a uh, Twitter page. We've updated social media pages such as Facebook. I've reached out to um, surrounding community neighborhood associations and their pages to get the word out. Uh, my next step will be to go to their meetings to talk to uh, members, parents, family members uh, who may have children at Iroquois High School. So uh, we are still in the, the new stages of recruiting because it's, it's definitely different than what it was two years ago where they were able to go in and meet with kids during lunch break. So uh, we had a lot of success, when I say success, in meeting kids and letting them know, you know, put a name with a face, letting me tell them a little bit about the program this past week, uh, putting an application in their hand, telling them to have their parents call me or, or email me so I can answer questions and give them more information about the program. Uh, like I told uh, Pastor Monica and Sarah, I'll do everything short of dancing in the middle of Taylor Boulevard to get the word out about our program. We want kids to, to come in here. It's gonna be a safe place. It's gonna be an engaging uh, place, and it's gonna be a place that they're gonna learn and grow and hopefully have a positive impact on their family, their community, their school. So um, just to give you a little bit about me, in case you haven't heard previously, uh, I was born and raised in the south end of Louisville, uh, left and was gone for a while for college and careers and working and things like that. When I came back, I purposely came back to this area because I love this area. Uh, I want to have a positive impact on this area. And uh, this opportunity was, was sort of a match. I, I want to say a match made in heaven because where I had been in education for 30 years, my motivation is working with kids. And I haven't done that for about three years since I left my last coaching opportunity, even after I had retired. So when this came about and uh, when things played out that I was able to uh, come on board, it's been a source of great pride and motivation for me. So I look forward to meeting you. Uh, hopefully I have a chance to do that. Maybe if you come by to volunteer one day or just in an opportunity to meet and greet you uh, while here in the building. Also, thanks to everyone who has donated product uh, and certain uh, items for the, the for our pantry that will be utilized as soon as I get kids here. I'm ready for kids. Kids can show up tomorrow. I'm ready to go. I've just got to get kids. So if you have family, friends, neighbors who have kids at Iroquois High School, please uh, put a bug in their ear about coming and joining our program. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to you this morning. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And again, I look forward to meeting everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And we are excited that you're part of our program here at Glenhurst. Okay, scripture reader is Eva this morning. Our reading will come from Mark chapter 9. You can use the mouse or the clicker. Either should work. Mark 
in morning. Um, and leaving that region, they traveled through Galilee. Jesus didn't want anyone to know he was there, or he wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but three days later will rise from the dead. They didn't understand what he was saying, however, and they were afraid to ask him what he meant. After they arrived at Capernaum and settled in the house, Jesus asked his disciples, What were you discussing out on the road? But they didn't answer because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve disciples over to him, and said, Whoever wants to be the first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. Then he put a little child among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also God who sent me.
Thank you to the choir. It's nice to have you all back in worship. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, in the reading of scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. In the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be lived. Amen. There are, it should be on, Terry. Huh. Let's try that. Is that better? Okay. There are many occasions when it's appropriate to speak, when we want to express an opinion on an important issue, when we want to deepen a relationship with another person, when we want to take part in a social conversation, when we want to offer sympathy or encouragement or understanding to another person. There are also times to keep silent. When we don't know what to say about an issue, when we can vent nothing but destructive, decisive words, when we confront a mystery that we cannot explain, when there is such pain that any word is shallow and what is needed is silent, loving presence. But it's not always easy to know whether it is time for silence or time for speaking. Sometimes we talk too much and try to dominate a situation when we really need to be silent and listen to what others have to say. Sometimes we're silent when we need to speak out in opposition to injustice or evil. Sometimes when we speak, when we don't really know what we're talking about, I'm sure none of us have ever done that, but sometimes it happens. And sometimes we hesitate when we could offer a word of comfort or insight or support. In today's scripture lesson, twice, the disciples do not know what to say, so they are silent. And the first comes after Jesus tells them what is going to happen to him, that he is going to be betrayed, killed, and then raised from the dead. Mark writes, they do not understand what he is saying, and they are afraid to ask him what he means. It could be that they have some idea what he's talking about, but do not want to believe that he really means what he says. They have an idea of what it means to be God's chosen Messiah, but they don't want their definition of the word Messiah to be challenged. There are times that we are silent because we are not sure we heard correctly and we don't want to ask dumb questions when we think that everyone else knows the answer. Sometimes we're silent because we do not want to hear what we fear we might hear if we ask for clarification. It's easier to keep silent, to pretend that we do not understand, than to ask and run the risk of hearing something we might not like. When someone says that they do not want to hear politics and social justice preached or talked about in worship or during the sermon, they're not listening to Jesus. If you listen carefully to Jesus, he is continually confronting the politicians, the religious leaders, and the people about the need for disciples to love their enemies, care for the most vulnerable people in the community, treat every person as a neighbor who is a beloved child of God. This includes the person with a mental health challenge the person with a physical disability, the person who is autistic, the person who is homeless, the person with a skin color different from you, the person who lives in a racist society, therefore does not have the same access to education, healthcare, and jobs that we all do. 
the person who had an abortion, the person who married a person of the same gender, the person who has served or is serving time in jail, the person struggling with the substance abuse problem. Jesus continually addresses social justice and political issues. The second silent comes after Jesus asked the disciples what they're arguing about. This time they're silent because they're ashamed of the answer. They're arguing about who is the greatest disciple among them. It's hard to imagine that they've traveled with Jesus for three years and they still don't get it. They still don't understand the message that he's trying to bring about God's kingdom, where the first will be last and the last will be first. This means that the people with black and brown skin will be the first in line admitted into God's kingdom. It means people living week to week on food stamps and welfare will be the first in line into God's kingdom. It means people who struggle with depression and anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and a whole list of other mental health challenges will be the first in line to get into the kingdom of God. It means people who have been teased about or discriminated against them because of their sexual orientation, gender identity, and partner choice will be the first in line into God's kingdom. It means people who have enough money or more than enough money to pay their bills, buy food, maybe enjoy their hobbies and entertainment will be last admitted into God's kingdom. It means people who are healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually will be the last in line to be admitted into God's kingdom. It means pastors and church members will be the last people admitted into God's kingdom. Sit with that knowledge for a minute. Who will be first and who will be last? We all get in, but the order we might be expecting is not. Isn't that what Jesus does all the time? Turn everything upside down for us. Sit with this knowledge for just a moment. When Jesus asks the disciples what they're arguing about, they are silent. They don't want to admit they're arguing about who's the greatest among them. How often are you silent? Or do you think you would be silent if Jesus were to ask you, what you're talking about with friends, and maybe even more important about what you're worrying about. Some of us spend a lot of time worrying about status, about acquiring symbols of our wealth, such as cars and jewelry and houses and titles. Some of us spend a lot of time worrying about the future, about our families, about our jobs, about our communities. Many of us would be silent if Jesus were to ask us, how well are we following the commands and the way of life that Jesus sets before us? To emphasize his point about the first being last and the last being first, Jesus sits down and he calls his disciples to gather around him. And then he invites one of the nearby children to come and sit on his lap. And he tells them, Anyone who welcomes a little child welcomes not only me, but also God who sent me. According to Professor Sharon Ring and Feasting on the Word, these words from Jesus are powerful and shocking description of the values of God's will and reign, which assigns worth and importance to every person. A child did not contribute much of anything to the economic value of the household or the community. 
A child did not enhance one's prestige or influence in the community. A child did not add honor and respect to the family or the community. Children and along with servants were the lowest in the social status. Yet Jesus is saying that to welcome and care for a child is to welcome and care for Jesus. And even beyond that, to welcome and care for a child is to welcome and care for God. There are several lessons for us in this week's scripture passage. First, we are called as disciples of Jesus to treat every person with dignity. We are called to remember that the first will be last and the last will be first. Second, we are called to live our faith every day. We are called to listen to the words of Jesus and to see the example of discipleship that he sets before us as we live out our faith. Third, God in Jesus Christ does not care about our material possessions, our economic status, or even our educational status. God in Jesus Christ cares about how we treat people, how we care for our neighbors, especially the most vulnerable among us. Children, refugees, immigrants, women, racial minorities, people who struggle daily with emotional, mental, physical, and medical challenges. Jesus never said that being a disciple would be easy, and it's not easy, but it is a divine challenge that enriches our lives and our faith. Amen. So our hymn for this morning is Amazing Grace. If you have a, a bulletin in your hand, it's the wrong hymn. We decided last thing this morning to change that hymn, so we're going to sing Amazing Grace, number 546 in your hymnals. So I invite us this morning to share both the prayer concerns and joys. Yes, Terry, thank you. One week away and I forget about my mic. I invite us this morning to share the 
joys and concerns that you would like included in our prayers. So we'll continue to keep you, Karen, in our prayers. Who else would we like to pray for? Karen? A joy, okay. All right, Karen's medicine is working and her heart is back in rhythm. That is a joy. Thank you to the doctors. Regina. Did you say Michael? Okay. Regina's nephew has COVID and he's in the ICU. Please keep me informed and updated and we'll keep him in our prayers. If you want him on the prayer chain, just get me his full name and we'll do that as well. Yes. Did you say Donnie? Okay, thank you. We will keep him in our prayers. Danny? Oh, that is good news as well. Excellent. Danny's son and daughter-in-law are now recovered, tested negative. They're ready to return to school. So we're excited for them. Anne, do you have your hand up? Yes. Yes. Um, a neighbor of mine, Joe, who recently lost his sister to COVID. Okay. A neighbor of Anne Stites named Joe, who recently lost his sister to COVID. We will keep the whole family in our prayers, Anne. Thank you. And how is your brother doing? He's doing about the same. He's okay. he's okay. All right. We'll continue to pray for Anne's brother and sister-in-law. All right. Anyone else on Zoom? Jeff. Uh, Linda's sister-in-law, Pat, her husband passed away yesterday afternoon. So Linda Morell's sister-in-law? Passed yesterday oh, afternoon. My sister-in-law, Linda's sister. <laughs> Linda's sister's husband passed yesterday afternoon. Okay, thank you. All right. Yes, Debbie. Bonnie and Joe, both coming, getting over COVID. We'll keep them in our prayers. Is there anyone in the choir? Nancy? Okay, so Bob and the Galloway family? Okay, Bob and the Galloway family. Kirby? Did you say Melissa? Okay, so we'll keep Melissa, who lost her mother. That's a lot of people we're grieving and mourning for this week. Anyone else? Okay. If I remember correctly, we're going to sing and then we're going to pray. So let me pull up the song. Faith while trees are still in blossom. Let us pray. God of all blessings, we praise and honor your holy name today and every day. In the midst of this pandemic, we pray for our community, our nation, and our world. 
We are living in a crazy time when the issues of face masks and vas vaccinations are dividing families, friends, and communities. Please help us to find a spirit of safety, cooperation, and unity. Please walk with and keep safe hospital and clinic staffs, firefighters, EMTs, and police officers, store clerks and restaurant staff, poster workers, truck drivers, and teachers. We pray for the many people who are sick with COVID-19, those who are at home, those who are recovering, and those who are in hospitals across the nation. People fighting cancer and other serious medical issues. People struggling with a mental health challenge or substance abuse. People who are still unemployed and facing eviction. People who are hungry for food, clean water, and justice. Please remind us that you call us to treat each other with dignity and mercy. Remind us to live our faith every day by caring for our neighbors, especially those in need of help. Remind us. But the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Remind us to care for and protect our children. This morning we pray for Karen and for Mike, for Don, for Tim and his wife, for Joe and his family as they grieve, for Anne's brother and sister, for Pat's family as they grieve, for Bonnie and Joe, for Bob, for the Galloway family, and for Melissa. We ask you, gracious God, in the silence to hear the prayers of our hearts. And gracious God, we ask you to hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are blessed to be invited to participate in God's mission and ministry and this community and this congregation and beyond. This invitation calls us to share the good news of the gospel to care for our neighbors, to follow Jesus Christ as disciples of Christ, and to grow in that discipleship. So please continue to support the ministry and the work of our congregation through your online giving, 
your online banking and mailing your offering to the church office or putting it in the plate as you enter and leave the sanctuary. And as always, we thank you for your generosity. So what do we do now? This week, treat every person you encounter with dignity. Pray deeply and do one good deed for another person. That's what I invite you to do this week. Announcements. We have a few of them this week. First of all, join us in Fellowship Hall today from 2 to 4 for the farewell party for Reverend and Sandy Kittendorf. I know that Gay Ann and Debbie and others have worked really hard to put this together, so we thank you for that, and we hope to see you all here at 2 o'clock this afternoon. We are collecting items for the basket auction to benefit the programs at Brooklawn and Bellwood. This year we're doing a movie, a family movie basket and a couple's movie basket and invite you to bring in some items for those two baskets. This week's weekly announcement will remind you of some of the things we've thought of. We invite you to be creative, bring your items in. They're all due in by October 10th. We're also collecting pennies and change and even some dollar bills in here for the pool repairs at Camp Miram, the United Church of Christ camp in south central west of Indiana. I think I've got it right to you know geography is not my thing, but I invite you just to drop off some change in our jar. Karen's going to start counting it and we'll empty out the jar for next week and keep filling it. Thank you for your change. The truck in our parking lot, for those of you who have wondered, that's there all the time, belongs to the Food Literacy Project that use our office space on the second floor of our building, and they have been given permission to use our parking lot by consistory. A couple of people have been wondering about that truck. And please take home a couple of cucumbers or some tomatoes. All of those need to go. They certainly can't stay in the sanctuary. They were given to us by the Food Literacy Project. I don't know what yellow tomatoes taste like, but I've got a couple of those to take home and try them. But try the produce. They're supposed to be lower in acid. All right, so let's fill, empty out that tray. There's some plastic bags there to take some produce home with you. All right. Like a rock, God is under us for support. Like a roof, God is over us for protection. Like the horizon, God is within us and in the pouring out of us. Like a pebble in the sea, God surrounds us and we are in God. Let us go forth in faith and in love for God is ever with us. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and in the coming week. Go in peace, go be a light of hope, and go serve in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>